Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the third session on day three of A Life Connects, an all week long virtual only event brought to you exclusively by A Life Group. We're at about the midweek, uh, midweek, midway point now through our session and our schedules. We've had some wonderful guest speakers talking everything from fitness to fashion to health and wellness to, to spinal health, too. But I must admit, on a personal level, these happy hour sessions are fast becoming a personal favorite of mine. And tonight promises to be no different. And happy hour indeed it promises to be because we are delighted to welcome a very cheerful Irish chap by the name of Will Moylan to the stage to talk to us about all things Jameson. Will is a brand ambassador for Jameson Irish Whiskey. He's been in Malaysia since September last year. Before that was working in China, representing the brand out there which sounds like a phenomenal journey that I'm very interested to hear about, and I'm sure you guys are too. Will will be talking us through the Jameson journey, telling us all about exactly why this particular whiskey is just so popular. He'll be telling us about the history and mystery of this wonderful drink, and stay tuned and pay attention because at the end of the session, we'll be having a special giveaway where you can stand to win some exclusive, not for sale Jameson merchandise. So please, I won't keep him any longer. Help me welcoming Will. Good evening. How are Scott. you, Jake? How's everything? Um, I'm very well indeed. Good to have you on board. Thank you for joining us. And cheers. Oh, it's great to be here. Cheers. I don't have anything in my glass yet, but I'm going to fix that later with a little cocktail. Well, let's hope so. And you'll be showing us all how to make one at home, I, I, I suppose. I am, yeah. So that's going to be, I'm going to finish off with just how to make a really simple uh, Jamison cocktail. Really simple serve. Excellent, really. So anybody at home who, uh, who happens to have a few, uh, few ingredients lying around, get them ready because they might just be what you need to make what we're, we're going to make later on. So, exactly. Will, um, like, like I just pointed out um, in, in, in your introduction, you've, um, you've lived a very interesting life as far as your Jameson career has, has gone so far. You've, you've, you've been able to travel halfway across the world from your native home of Ireland, uh, being the face of an ambassador for this, this very, very popular, popular drink. So... Talk yeah. to us a little bit about, about your journey so far with Jameson and, 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 and how it's brought you here. Yeah, well, so uh, Jameson in Ireland have a graduate program. So uh, like, you know, after, after you graduate college, it, it can be like difficult to find a job straight away. And um, so Jameson have this graduate program where they take you on and you're given a role um, and you're also trained along the way. Um, so there was like, I was applying for a few different jobs when I was in final year, but the Jameson, the job with Jameson just seemed really cool. Um, so yeah, it was uh, like everyone wants I mean, to go abroad, so it is quite competitive to get it. Uh, but I was doing, you get paid to drink and you get paid to travel. It sounds like almost too good to be true, really. It's like there must be a catch. I mean, or, sometimes it is too good to be true. <laughs> um, like sometimes it is too good to be true, but it is. It's it's really great. It's such a it's an amazing opportunity, and it's so it's well known in Ireland for being this program that's you know like you just it's like amazing opportunities you learn a lot you get like marketing experience so you have like a lot of uh, marketing majors and marketing students that will uh, apply for this program um was that was that your major too what what, what were you studying uh, at college when you applied for this role what, what what's your what's your background in um so actually i did study marketing so i chose to study um commerce international with chinese um so my university offer is like just yeah, it's a very, uh, very unusual combination. And um, so my university offers uh, like commerce on its own, and then they also offer uh, commerce international. So you choose a language to go with it, and I chose Chinese. Um, it was I, I liked languages and I liked business, so I wanted to do commerce with a language. Um, uh, and we, I mean, most, yeah. So most most of us in our own, most, I mean, I went through the UK school system myself. Of course, most of us just choose to go with French or something a bit more easy until until then we're able to give it up. But you went with one of the hardest languages out there, which is pretty brave. Uh, yeah, so I was because I, I did French at school. So between so for college, it was actually a toss up between that and Spanish, French and Spanish. Um, and then uh, my mom kept saying to me that Chinese could be an important one to do. So. Uh, I ended up going with that because I thought there'd be like really cool opportunities to travel, um, and I was right. <laughs> she was not wrong. She was not wrong. She just sounds like a very a wonderful and sensible woman, your mother. She is very sensible, the most sensible. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I'm, uh, I think like doing French or Spanish would have been cool, uh, but I'm happy that I did Chinese because it is a, quite a difficult language to learn. Um, so I think that if I hadn't had to learn it at university, I probably wouldn't have learned it otherwise. 
for sure. Yeah. Well, it's very yeah. so. I mean, how's your Chinese now? Are you, you, I mean, it's widely spoken here, of yeah. course. Are you still getting a chance to practice it? Um, not as much in KL, um, but in Johor and Penang, I actually get it. When I when I travel for work to Johor and Penang, I get it. Um, I actually get I give like whiskey trainings mm. through Chinese, um, and I have to yeah wow. uh, meetings through Chinese. Well, what is there? And I bet there must be always, and I, I bet you you don't get sick of this. What there must be a reaction every time you bust out an introduction in in, in Chinese. The look of surprise and shock and horror i'm sure on some people's faces that must be that, that must be quite fun to observe every time i actually i don't get fed up with the reaction because it's just so funny every time uh, i'm like i'm sitting in, in front of a group of bartenders waiting to begin and they're kind of they're talking and sometimes they'll just use chinese because they assume uh that i can't understand them um, and then sometimes i'll so sometimes i'll start in english and then all of a sudden switch to chinese and the look of shock on their faces is something else. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, you can speak Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I must admit, I've, I mean, I, I've been here for, a, I've been here for a few years before. This is obviously not related to Chinese, but I've, I've been here for a few years, and my Malay really isn't where it should be. And um, I, I kind of wish I had that in the back pocket, you know, just to bust out occasionally and surprise some people, and and, and just, you know, yeah, they're not, they're not expecting bit. it, like. <laughs> Um, I think I need to brush up exactly. my Malay as well. Uh, I don't have, I, my Malay is very limited. So I think while I'm in Malaysia, I may as well brush up on that as well. Well, again, well while, while we're stuck at home, you might as well break, you know, break out the dictionary and start practicing. We've got plenty of time on our hands. Yeah, download Geolingo. So, <laughs> so t tell us, Will, tell us a little bit more about what the, um, you mentioned you get a lot of exposure in the role as a brand ambassador, a lot of marketing, and you mentioned just then you do you get to do a lot of training, so a lot of you know kind of workshops and delivery and whatnot. Yeah. So your role, um, your your role in as a brand ambassador is really, is it more client facing as far as teaching bars and bartenders like the best way to use your drinks, or is it being a brand ambassador for the consumer side of things? What is it you spend more of your time doing? That's actually that's a very good question. Um, I would say it's about it depends on like what market you're in for this job. But um, for Malaysia, I would say it's about 50 50. Um, so it's important that it's important to like, you know, have a good relationship with buyers. And um, it's important that buyers know about your product. Um, and the more they know, like the more they can they can get to understand it and like it. Um, but that, but I'd say, so I'd say the trainings I do are mostly aimed at bartenders. But the kind of the events that I would run are mostly aimed at consumers. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so do you have a particular profile um, for the kind do you have a particular profile for the especially out in this part of the world for the kind of people you want drinking Jameson? Do you want to be seen drinking Jameson that you really want to attract to drink Jameson? Or is it a I mean, I could never say a one size fits all approach, because I know you know every drink has its own special secret. You know, uh, so what, who is it? Who is it in your mind that is like the, the perfect profile for a Jameson drinker? Um, yeah, well, like as you say, we do like to keep it inclusive to everyone, but um, our target market is usually twenty-five to thirty-five year olds, um, both male and female. Um, and like we we can get like into the more like there's there are more specific profiles, but it's kind of like twenty-five to thirty-five year olds is the is the kind of the broad profile we look at, um, but. Um, in Malaysia, we actually we we actually go a little bit younger than that. That's just like that's from kind of Jameson Global. In Malaysia, we would go maybe like twenty two to twenty to thirty five. Interesting, interesting. And how, um, so, well, before we get to Malaysia, talk to us about your time in China. That must have been your first your first job after graduation on this on this rotation program, and they sent you halfway across the world to one of the, yeah. if not the biggest whiskey market in the world. It must be up there. China's lovely. Um, yeah, so it, it is quite it's quite a big whiskey market, and um, it's also quite big for Baijiu. But um, the, what what the biggest spirit is is Baijiu in China, and um, so that's oh. our biggest competitor. I mean, uh, foreign imported spirits in China only make up like a very small percentage of the alcohol that's consumed in China. Um, but like when you consider the population of China and the consumption mm -hmm. in China, uh, it's still uh, it's it's still quite considerable. Um, but it wasn't sure. so China. It wasn't the most unfamiliar thing because I had done Chinese at university, uh, and I had spent a mm. year in China, like kind of an Erasmus year in China. So I was kind of expecting to get sent to China when they when they announced where I was going to be going. 
because uh, they send people all over the world. They send people to like America, Africa, uh, South America, all over Europe. Um, but because I had Chinese, I was kind of expecting that they'd send me to China. Oh, and so did you have, I mean, I'm sure you, I'm sure you wouldn't pick and I'm sure you wouldn't do it any differently, but if you could, where would you have most liked to go, do you think? If not um, China, let's assume Oh, that's a very good question. Maybe, um, I suppose like the experience you get in different markets is going to be very different. Maybe like America or Canada. Um, that would be uh, interesting one. Yeah. It'd be cool because Jemison, so like the difference between like Asia and uh, like North America and Europe um, and also Australia is that Jemison is like very well established in those markets. So the sort of work you're doing is kind of like building on what people already know. Uh, whereas the sort of work you do on Asia is building up, building from the ground up. I see. That, that must be, a, like, it, that presents its own kind of challenge and its own kind of opportunity too. So that must be like a very interesting way of, and a more, I guess, you know, more, there's more dynamism perhaps in the role and you're, you're looking at more creative and innovative ways to attract a completely new market segment and, and attract them away from, you know, their current, their current drinking behaviors and preferences rather than, as you say, just keeping it, keeping yourself visible, you know, treading water a bit. It must be quite an interesting challenge to set yourself to build into a new market. Definitely. And that's why I love being in Asia, because you get to see Jamison growing. Um, and you get to see like people trying Jamison for the first time and being like, wow, this is really good. Um, so that's oh, why I find it. It, it. it is a challenge over here, but uh, it's so interesting. Um, and it's just, it's so interesting to see people uh, like experiencing like our events for the first time. Um, so it's, there's, I think there's something really special about that. And uh, you sound like a proud father almost, you know, the pride at seeing it grow out here and the challenges of, of, of new fatherhood. <laughs> I am so proud of my brand. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so since you've been, I know this is this obviously is not a great time, of course, for uh, well, really for for, for most people, um, but definitely the events industry. Uh, we found it too, and so on. But up until the movement restriction order was in, in place, uh, since September, talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing, what kind of events you you run, and and how you attract people to them, and and what is so special about these events? What's the hook? What's the, what, what is, how is it you're getting people through the doors? How is it you are really selling Jameson to them as a new product? Um, so the sort of events that we've done, um, when I first arrived, we were just about to begin the roving activation. So we had like a, a Jameson branded uh, Volkswagen combi van and we had a team of promoters and they'd go around to four bars every night and um, kind of usually in the same area. Um, and it was, it was kind of just to like help like, like sample Jamison. So uh, customers would uh, play a game with the promoters. Um, and if they won the game, they got, they got a, a card to go up to um, a bicycle bar that we had set up. So it was like a, a bicycle with a bar on top. Um, and oh. they, yeah, <laughs> and we have some pretty cool, uh, we have some pretty cool merchandise here. Um, so they could go up to the bicycle bar and they could make their own uh, Jamison. Um, and it was, really, it was really cool because people were trying Jamison for the first time. Um, Interesting. So, so that was kind of like what I arrived over to. Uh, and then just kind of around uh, Christmas, New Year time, we ran a Pong tournament. Uh, so it was, it wasn't actually, we, we wanted to like put a twist uh, on Pong, on the Pong that people were used to playing. So we, sure. uh, we created like this added challenge of obstacles. So you had to spin a wheel and then whatever it landed on, um, you had to, so like it was a, a different obstacle, like a, a wrist weight or an oven glove, and you had to play uh, Pong with that, uh, wow. with that obstacle, yeah. <laughs> well, that's very, very creative. Although I suppose, look, playing play, Pong, of course, you know, for those at home who don't know, is, is usually played with cups with small amounts of beer. Now, if you're playing Pong with cups and small amounts of whiskey, you're asking for trouble pretty yeah. soon, unless you can make it a bit more difficult. So oven gloves sounds like a pretty safe way of doing that. Oh, yeah. The, um, so, yeah, we didn't actually put any gems in the cups. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, okay, that's good to know. Probably a simple yeah, measure, yeah. I think. But, um, um, just, just for like hygiene reasons, if the ball is like bouncing around the room and stuff. So we actually, we just did, uh, they just take a drink if they, if they last. Instead of, they just like take out the cup and take away the drink. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. Good. Sensible tip for at home. If you're, if, even if you're playing Pong at a house party, just use water and keep the alcohol to the side. It makes cleaning up, I think, much, much easier. So good tip. 
Yeah. That's very interesting. I mean, uh, as, as you know, we've, we've been in touch before through, um, through the A-Life group, as it were. And so our role uh, as lifestyle marketeers is to put on hopefully as creative events as we can, like, 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 like we were doing. And it has been over the last year or two, like a very interesting time for the, for the, the lifestyle industry, I suppose, as a whole, whether, whether it comes to alcohol or fragrance or even chocolate, and some of the experiential um, events which people are which people are coming up with, make it a very very interesting time to be in this line of work. And it's always very interesting to see what different people are doing, how they're engaging, like their their fan base, and how they're attracting new ones too. Um, yeah. And yeah, and, and of course, social media playing a role because something like the bicycle bar that's going to go all over social media because people are just so fascinated. Nice. By it. Yeah, exactly. A portable bar. <laughs> anyway, okay, cool. So, well, so I understand you've got a few a few slides for us to get to to go through. Yes. You've, got, you've got a little a little a little journey to take us on. So, yes. I would love I would love to hand that over to you, so you can you, you can take us on with doing some journey. And then um, we do have uh, yeah. So, pay attention, people who are watching at home, because we will have a pop quiz at the end of this presentation. And the fastest finger first, the quickest person to answer the questions correctly will win. We have two prizes to give away or two sets of prizes to give away. And so we'll be asking those at the end of the presentation. So pay attention. Will, over to you. Okay, cool. So uh, I, I presume you can see that, that slide now, can you? Yeah. What's the story? Okay, perfect. Well, I'll tell you exactly what the story is now. <laughs> um, Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start with the bottle because um, a lot of the information about Jemison um, is actually on the bottle itself. Um, so I have a bottle here beside me um, and it's become actually an icon uh, around the world, this, the, the, the green bottle, and it has evolved over time, uh, but it's still maintained like, kind of like the, the Jemison identity. Um, right. So I'm gonna start with a very important part of uh, what Jemison is about. So if you can see there, there's kind of like a crest. You can see like uh, you can see the word cinemetu written, and you can see like a pirate yeah. ship. Yeah. Um, so it's this is actually this is a very important part of Jemison. Um, it's so it's in in Ireland, uh, every last name has a family crest. Uh, so my last name is Moylan. We have our own family crest with, with our own meaning. Uh, the Jemison family crest. Um, so it has a pirate ship on top because John Jemison's family, um, they would sail in the northern seas and they would fight pirates um, and if you see the, the <laughs> word cinemetu written uh, that's latin for without fear yeah um, so this was a very yeah, important sure. part well, of jemison we're fighting. yeah um, sure if you're, a, if you're fighting pirates you can't be very very afraid of them so yeah that, that's a pretty relevant family motto i would think oh yeah it's perfect like it's it's it was kind of the motto that jemison and his family lived by um, so it's it's so when Jemison uh, made Jemison, he wanted the word cinemetu uh, to be written on every bottle, um, and the word cinemetu are Latin for without fear. Interesting. Um, okay, makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's so if on every bottle of Jemison, you'll see that family crest, and you'll see the words cinemetu written, um, and cinemetu is really okay. what we're all about as a brand. Um, okay. So I'm going to move down to the bottom of the bottle and you'll see the words John Jemison written. Uh, and that's the name of our founder. So uh, the name of our founder was John Jemison. Um, and he set up Jemison in the year 1780. So you can actually, you can see the words John Jemison written at the bottom of the bottle. Um, and then you can see yeah. uh, 1780 further up. Wow. So well over 200 years old then. We're knocking on, knocking on for 250. Um, yeah, exactly, and it's it's ancient as well. Very old whiskey, um, and a, a fun fact about John Jemison. Um, I know there's quite there's a bit of a rivalry sometimes between um, Scotch and Irish whiskey. Uh, John Jemison his, himself was from Scotland. Oh wow, that is a controversial <laughs> little switch he's made there, isn't it? I'm sure he wasn't. He wasn't yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good job he makes such a good drink because that is a brave move. That, that, I'm sure he wasn't the most popular guy. The, down at the pub. Exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, I suppose he used, he lived by his, uh, his motto of Cinemetu when he was doing that. Um, cause he, so his family, he was married to a lady who had her own, um, his, her family had their own uh, Scotch whiskey distillery. So he kind of learned all the knowledge from that. And then he came to Ireland where Irish whiskey was just starting up at the time. And he set up an Irish whiskey distillery. 
Wow, smart move. Yeah, smart move. I mean, it paid off, didn't it? Yeah, it continues too. Wow, excellent. That is foresight. Uh, exactly, yeah. Who, who could have like predicted that it would take off the way it did? Well, I'm very glad it did for one, and I know you are too. So oh, long yeah, I'm very continue. grateful it took off. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> Um, and if you just see on the right hand side, you could say you can you'll see that um, not once, not twice, but three times distilled. So this is a very important part of Jamison is that it's distilled three times. Three times. Three times. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the most important uh, messages that we drive of Jamison. It's triple distilled. Okay. And how long? I mean, maybe sorry to jump in, and 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 apologies if you're if you're getting to this, but so how long? does the triple distillation process take, say, versus a one or two? Do you know? Like, how how much longer does that add to the overall sort of production time of, of one bottle? It actually doesn't add that much. Dist dist distillation doesn't take that much longer. It, it adds a couple of hours, um, about six hours oh, longer yeah. um, versus, yeah, sure. versus double. Uh, it doesn't take that yeah. long. Yeah. OK, well, um, it, well, so very much worth it then for that, you know, it, if all you're sacrificing is two hours, but you get that extra layer of smooth quality then absolutely distill away exactly yeah because we like when when jemison was first set up we uh we experimented with them um, like uh distilling it once distilling it twice distilling it three times four times uh but we just found that uh three times was like the kind of the optimum to get the the signature yeah. smoothness but also to um so that you kind of like after that it kind of just becomes like it just becomes a bit obsolete just distilling it more and more. So three times we found uh, was the was the best number of times to distill. Interesting, interesting. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, cool. And the history of Jemison is like really interesting. Like uh, Irish whiskey went through like a lot of up and ups and downs, um, especially like kind of up to until up until nineteen twenty, we were booming in uh, like the U.S., in Ireland, the U.K mainland Europe, they were kind of like our biggest markets. Um, but then unfortunately in America, they introduced the prohibition, so we couldn't sell to America anymore. Um, and that was when Irish whiskey took a hit. Uh, and even like World War II, we took like another hit. Um, but it was just, it was great how all of the Irish whiskey distilleries, even though we had these rivalries and these competitions, we all came together to fight through the difficult time together. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Yeah, exactly. So, like, the history is quite long, but I'll, I'll give you the short version. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, please. This is, but this is very interesting. I, I had no idea that there was any kind of, um, you know, I guess it's always a friendly kind of competition because I suppose even if, yeah, you're even if it, even if you are competing fiercely on the product side, that it it still stems from a place of love for the drink itself, right? And yes, exactly. you know, people will swear by their different recipes and processes and distillations and whatnot, but ultimately you know love love conquers all you know and it's and it's a love for the you know for, for the purity of the drink itself which i guess got them got them together to to beat well to get through the war i couldn't Excellent. have said it better myself exactly it's a love for the irish whiskey that uh, that brought us all together um, and it's a, like a love for the irish whiskey that kind of that even lives on today and um, so even though we don't right. have these difficult times we still do have a love for irish whiskey and we want to spread that love uh, around the world me too for that matter <laughs> <laughs> um, and also just another point there so we started off in dublin uh, but now we actually just still in county cork in the south of ireland uh, because jemison grew quite quickly uh, so in the in 1975 we actually moved our distillery down to cork where there was a little bit more space I bet. So, but but even still, every bottle that comes out of Cork, every bottle of Jameson worldwide comes out of that one distillery in Cork. One distillery, yeah, exactly. So, uh, like certain brands might have different distilleries around the world, but uh, Jameson is only every bottle of Jameson comes from that one distillery in Cork in Ireland. Wow. Do you can I can, are we allowed to ask? In how many bottles is that a year? Like, what kind of how big is this distillery? Because Jameson, um, Jameson is a very popular yeah it is definitely we actually so at the moment it's 7.7 7, uh million cases per year and um, so a case is nine is nine bottles uh, and we sell 7.7 7 million worldwide i'm not going to try and do the maths on that one just now yeah but uh, that's that's yeah. pushing that's over 60, 60 million bottles of whiskey 
yeah it's a, it's a lot of whiskey um and we're, we're still growing very quickly um and that's why they've kind of they started to send brand ambassadors out to places like asia and africa because these are kind of like uh places where jemison is starting to grow very quickly yeah yeah i can only imagine well so you might you might have to open a, a another wing of this distillery or maybe yeah um, okay um so basically um, this is where our great taste comes from. Um, the finest local ingredients, triple distilled, as I said, um, and seasoned oak barrel. So I'll get to each of these now in a little bit more detail. Sure, yeah. Um, so Jemison is an Irish whiskey and all of our ingredients come from Ireland. Uh, we use, so, uh, we use a, a, like a, a mixture of malted and unmalted barley. Um, I actually have an example of these here. So when I'm giving a training in person, I actually I have all these um, kind of samples that I give out. And people can smell them, they can taste them if they want. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that now, but at least we we can like see them for reference. And um, so we Let have some see, malted barley and unmalted barley. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, you, you, I've made I've made you a bit bigger on screen, so feel free to okay, hold cool. up to the camera. Cool, yeah, I'll just I'll show them there. So we have a combination of malted barley and unmalted barley. Uh, a lot of whiskies would just use malted barley, but Jemison uses a combination of both. Um, and what you see, so malted barley is cooked barley. Um, so cooked. we, we put, okay. yeah, exactly. So uh, we put it into water because it's a, it's a seed. So we put it into water. It thinks it's been like planted. So it starts to release its enzymes. And then we heat it in hot, dry air. Um, if you want to make like a kind of a smoky flavor whiskey, you would use smoky air to dry it. But Jemison uses uh, hot, clean air because we don't have a smoky flavor. Okay, interesting. That's some good knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so always good chemistry. to know. Yeah, exactly. At its, at its finest. <laughs> um, so the next part, so we, we take the ingredients and we put them together to make alcohol. And the ingredients... Um, sorry, actually, so we have, I have, for the ingredients, we have barley, we have water, and we also have maize, so corn. I almost skipped over that okay. important part. And so we have water, barley, and maize. And we also add in a little bit of yeast, uh, and that's to create alcohol. Right, makes sense. Which is, which is a fairly crucial ingredient in the whiskey making process, right? Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Well, on the on the note of the, sorry, uh, sorry to jump in. Well, on the note of the triple distillation, I, I know you're about to talk us through it. We do have a question here from uh, Mr. Malcolm, who is okay, asking great. us what is what does triple distillation do to the taste of the whiskey itself? Uh, we touched question, upon it just now in terms of the smooth quality, but please tell us a little bit more about what triple distillation does to the taste of the whiskey. Okay, so I'll start by saying what triple a, what triple distillation does to the the whiskey, and then I'll move into like what actually how it affects the taste. And um, so if you, so if you just imagine, um, so we have these big stills; they're like kind of big kettles, and um, like big pots, and um, and we heat them. So like the whiskey starts in the first one, and we heat it at a temperature of seventy eight degrees. So then the the, and the reason it's 78 degrees is because alcohol boils at that temperature. So we're separating the alcohol from the water. Um, so it, it travels up. Um, if you can imagine, like, you know when you boil when you boil a kettle and you can see steam coming out the top? You know when that, when that happens? Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you seen what happens when it, like, hits a wall? If, if it, like, touches a surface? Yes, well, condensation. Exactly, Vapor. yeah. So that, that's what we're doing here. Um, oh, so more, we, oh, more, okay, yeah, exactly. So we, we kind of we boil it, um, and then it, it evaporates, um, and then we have like a cold surface at the top. So it hits the cold surface, and it turns back into liquid, and then it goes down into the second time to be distilled. So we do that three times. We boil it three times, it travels up, and then it has it hits a cold surface, and it turns back into liquid, and then it goes down into the next time to be distilled. Um, and the way so each time you distill. You make it smoother, um, because you're kind of you're taking out that kind of burn that you get sometimes when you take a shot, um, like you know you know when you take like a shot of of something and it kind of it burns your throat. I do, I do. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> I think we all know that feeling pretty well. <laughs> um, so by distilling three times, we're trying to, we're taking out that burn, and we're making it smoother. 
so that when you drink it, it doesn't kind of, it doesn't burn as much when you when it goes down. Okay, interesting. So there you go, Malcolm. So I hope that answers. I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, and so, a great so question. Jameson, Jameson's fairly unique, then, as you as you say here, in the sense that um, American whiskey is single distill and Scotch double. Yeah, Jameson. well, not not always. So I, that's just in the slide because it's like it's te it's what they tend to do. But some you'll you'll mm -hmm. find some American whiskeys that are triple distilled or double distilled, and Scotch that are uh, once distilled or three times distilled. But it, just in general, that's what um, that's how it goes. But uh, what's what's unique about Irish whiskey and Jamison is that it's still three times. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So that's kind of what sets it apart. Yeah. There is. Uh, Another another question here, which will um, which will uh, which will answer because I know the answer already, and that is um, someone is asking us if we're going to share a cocktail recipe. Yes, yes, we absolutely are. Will does have things to show us. Uh, um, I the best we'll for last. Exactly that. So you can we can look forward to that by the end of the session. So thank you for asking, and for sure we're going to be sharing one of those with you. Oh yeah, I'll be I'll be having my happy hour drink this evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to. I'll be making my own. I need to top up this now. Yeah, can't wait. Exactly, I feel I feel you there, Jacob. <laughs> um, okay, so then after we distill three times, uh, we put it into barrels for aging. Um, and even though so Irish, so Jameson is an Irish whiskey, but we buy the barrels from the United States and Spain. Um, so we buy bourbon barrels from the United States and sherry barrels from Spain. Uh, and the barrels are empty. We don't actually, we don't mix it in with what's there. Their barrels are empty, but previously yeah. the barrels were used to make uh, bourbon whiskey or sherry. So they still have the flavors uh, of this still inside the, inside the barrel. Interesting. I never, yeah. I never knew that. I never have considered that. Um, and it's Is actually, there... yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting as well, because you have, you can see, I have like kind of like an example of what it looks like. Um, so this is coming from a sherry barrel and this is coming from a bourbon barrel uh, and you'll see how like the difference the same liquid goes into the barrels but uh the the barrel makes such a difference to the the flavor you won't be able to tell that but even to the color yeah yeah so but, I mean, it, does it depend i mean does jameson have any like bra like you know brands or products underneath the main label how is it you determine which whiskey goes in in sherry and which one goes in bourbon which how do you choose the barrel um, do you mean like kind of like when we when we make this distills like how do we choose which one it goes into is it? Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, so Jamison, it's a blended whiskey. So we actually we make two different kind of uh, spirits. Um, so we make we, we make pot still spirits and we make uh, grain spirits. And it's just to do with the ingredients we use. Yeah. Pot still is just barley um, and grain is barley and maize. Um, I see. Okay. Yeah, so into the into the bourbon barrels, we just put uh, pot still whiskey, and into the sherry barrels, we put a mixture of pot still and grain uh, whiskey. Hmm, fascinating. I would never yeah. have considered. I would never have considered that you know uh, the 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 casks which you mature your whiskey in a are a sherry flavored almost. I know. Yeah, it's, I guess it's surprising, it's but it, it makes such a difference to the flavor at the end. Amazing, amazing. Okay, cool. Um, and so Jamison, we mature it for, um, so each bottle of Jamison has a mixture of four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, and seven-year-old. Um, so you'll have like, you'll have a mixture in every bottle. Um, but what we really emphasize is the triple distillation. Right, right. Yeah. And is it, is it, is it the triple distillation of, well, is each batch each batch in itself, so the four-year-old batch has been triple distilled, and then the five-year-old batch, been, you, don't, you don't triple distill at all when it's in the same bottle, right? It's a bunch um, of different triple distilled. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, we, so we, start off, we start off with the ingredients, and we mix them together with alcohol, and, and then we distill them all. Yeah. Um, so, and we distill them in two different ways and two different ingredients. Um, and then gotcha. those, the fine, yeah, the final stage is barrels. Um, and then uh what we actually we have we have master blenders and um, so these are they're, these are ex experts in like the flavors the tastes of jemison uh, and they come in yeah. they take the like exact amounts of each spirit and each age and they mix it together to get that uh that unique flavor of jemison 
Wonderful. Okay, good. I'm, I'm learning a lot more than I expected to learn about uh, about Irish whiskey tonight. This is fascinating stuff, Will. Thank you. Oh, no problem at all. It's uh, it's interesting as well. I was pretty interested when I when I first uh, learned about it as well. I'll bet. I'll bet. Okay. So this 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 guy looks like a, a cellar master of some description. Yeah, exactly. So he's kind of he would be like he and um, he would be a blender. He would he kind of uh, he would take a sample of each and. The way they do, the, the way they actually do the blending is by nose, so it's like an art because you have to you have to know exactly what notes to put together to get the signature taste of Jemison, just because it can vary sometimes. Sometimes uh, barrels can give a slightly different flavor, so might, you might have to use a little bit more of one type of barrel, a little bit less of one type of barrel, and um, so it's a it's a very complicated process. <laughs> Well, more chemistry. <laughs> more. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's what it all comes back to, isn't it? It is a very, very sweet science. <clears throat> but, you know, worth it. Worth it. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, so then, just to bring it back to, like, our Irish roots, um, we are, like, so we're a serious whiskey in the sense that, like, we, we take the making seriously. But in the sort of events we do, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So that's really what we're like as a brand. And um, we're kind of like relaxed, chilled, um, just kind of like get together with your friends and um, yeah, just kind of like chilled out. Yeah, well, nice. I, you, you, I, I always maintain, I mean, I'm lucky to have grown up <clears throat> in the UK, therefore, and with a lot of, sort of Irish friends. And I always maintain it's, it's never really a party until the Irish show up. You know, like, <laughs> you, don't know what good, you don't know what good crack is drunk with an Irishman. So. Um, and I you even use an Irish word there, crack. Good job. <laughs> Which not many people know is spelled in a very Irish way. It's C R A I C for the record, even though it's pronounced yeah. entirely different. Just to clarify um, that. <laughs> just to clarify that. We have, a, we have a question here from Howard, real quick, on the notes of barrels and what have you. Howard yeah. is curious as, as to how much a whiskey barrel itself holds. What kind of volume are we talking here? Do you know? And also, and, and what is it that gives whiskey its. Uh, it's famous dark brown color. Like what, what is it in the, which of the ingredients going into it, for example, is what, is what leaves whiskey the way it is, the way it looks? <clears throat> okay, great, yeah. So um, it really depends on the, ba on the barrel, but bourbon barrels are 200 liters and sherry barrels are 500 liters. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. That's a party. Um, exactly, yeah. You'd be sorted if you had that for a party, wouldn't you? You wouldn't even need the Irish. <laughs> That's your Irish right there. You think you you need you need more than a few rocks. You'd literally need that. You would need ice cubes, literally the size of rocks. I think for that, when it comes to drinking a barrel like that, so, you need an ice like or something ice. to to get that down, yeah. Um, and then oh yeah, so then. Uh, it's actually, it's the color. So inside the barrel, the barrel will kind of brown the whiskey a little bit anyway. So it'll give, so you can kind of see, um, the, so the spirit that goes into each of the barrels is actually, it's it's clear color, uh, same color as like a vodka or gin. So the, the barrel, the inside of the barrel kind of gives it a brown color anyway, um, when it kind of mixes, when it mixes with the wood. Um, and then also just to get the, the signature color of Jameson, we add a little bit of caramel in. Oh, really? Yeah. So whiskey, so you know, I know it goes back to sort of you know, very pure alcohol, but whiskey in its purest form, you could mistake for vodka or gin looking at it, you know, before it goes into the barrel and whatnot. Is that right? Like it's quite, a, it's got a very clear color. Um, yeah. So color wise, definitely. It's, it's the same color. Um, ingredients wise, it's different, but definitely like before it goes into the barrels, uh, you could, you could mistake it for a vodka or a gin. It's just clear color. And it's also very high in percentage. It's uh, after being distilled, it's about 80 to 90% volume. So uh, before it before it goes into the, before we actually put it into bottles, we have to uh, add some water to bring down the alcohol content. Oh, goodness me. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> triple, yeah. uh, triple distilled is the way to get with that. I, I think that, that's, that's too many, uh, <clears throat> too much alcohol for my liking, even for me. <laughs> How would I hope how would I answers your question? Very good question. Thank you for asking it. Um, Thank you very much. Very good question. Very good question. Okay, yeah, very so, impressive uh, these questions. Yeah, we've got we've got a very we, we've had a very good audience this week. You know, very engaged, very very intelligent audience actually. We're really putting our speakers to the test, which is good. That they're, they're and they're rising to the challenge, which is good to see too. So. Thank you again to the audience at home for for getting involved and for throwing your questions in. Um, and like I said, so there will be a. 
a chance to a chance to reward yourselves at the end of this with a trivia quiz that we're yeah. having. We've got two questions for you to answer and a couple of special prizes to give away. So exactly. we hope you've been paying attention. So um, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a little bit, um, just super quick. Uh, Jemison kind of in mainstream media today. Um, so uh, it's, Jemison has really taken off in like North America, Europe, Australia, uh, South Africa, Russia. Um, so I just wanted to, so like, I just wanted to kind of introduce how we got there. Um, so yeah, in the 80s, we kind of, um, a group of New York bartenders started getting really into Jemison. Uh, and that's, it became the shot of choice. And that's how we really took off in North America. Oh, I can, I can, yeah, I can just see the, the tattoos on the knuckles. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of part of our brand is like the, the cinematia tattoos. And we kind of, we, we kind of, we do a lot with like tattoos and barbers and stuff like that. Cool. And um, he's a Jamison advocate to the core. <laughs> I've, um, I've been warning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so like for example here we have like Skepta, he, he loves his Jemison um, we can see it in a lot of like shows um, see I don't know if you'll recognize some of these shows or whatever uh, we have like Childish Gambino Lady Gaga, the 1975 um, we also have like Pink um, she, her son named is, after, is named after Jemison and we have Rihanna who uh, mentions Jemison in some of her songs Really? Maybe yeah. I didn't listen to it. Maybe I maybe I should listen to more Rihanna, right? But but some of these shows, these, this, some of these shows are the biggest on TV. You've got The Wire, yeah. Stranger Things, Sons of Anarchy. Wow! So the exposures, and it's not just music, of course. It's and it's not just it, it's all different types of music. You've got rap artists, rock singers, pop singers, and you said Pink's exactly. daughter is named after the drink. Uh, sorry, Pink's son is named after Jamison. Wow! Wow! Yeah, she um, so there's some really interesting stuff there, um, and the, and this this is kind of why it's taken off is just because of like the Irishness, and um, it's something new. It's the third way in whiskey, um, and it's something kind of uh, yeah, something to discover. So it's kind of it's it's this new brand that people got really excited about. Interesting. Yeah, I I must say I always I I've always liked it because of the taste. I've always whenever I order Jameson, I know I know exactly what to expect in terms of the taste, and it's 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 unmistakably jameson do you know and i uh, exactly, yeah yeah we like you have you have the smoothness um mm -hmm. and it's 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 always going to be there um so i'll just go through this super quickly um this is our this is the family um this is a new product we're actually going to be launching soon jameson black barrel we're going to be launching it in malaysia um, oh, that looks yeah it's it's good it works really well in cocktails because it's um uh, we, it's, we, what we call it is a kind of like extra level of smoothness. Um, so we, we put it into barrels that have had the inside charred. So it gets kind of like a, like a, a very smooth taste to it. Interesting. Yeah. Does, it, does, does that charring give it like a, when you say charring, do you, uh, char, does that refer to a smoky kind of flavor you end up with or charring is charring is what exactly? Um, so charring means we kind of we we burn the we don't we burn the inside of the barrels twice because in Ireland the weather is quite cold and um, so we don't and we don't want the we don't want the wood to get eaten by by insects so we actually we cool. double burn the inside of the barrels to give it an extra an extra smooth flavor but surprisingly right. it doesn't actually have a smoky taste. Oh, huh, okay, interesting. Yeah, it's smooth. Um, and nearly done. Um, just something to mention here. These are called the barrel men. So these are these are the people who used to carry the barrels, which are obviously very heavy. And John Jemison really kind of uh, he would really honor them. They were really important parts of the company. So now everyone who works for Jemison or is like a bartender for Jemison or even just likes Jemison, we call them barrel men. Barrel men. Wow. So literally, like the backbone of the of the brand, physically. Exactly. The yeah. Brand. Exactly. Yeah. Um, very, very key part of our, our brand. Um, and yeah, this is kind of just like a closing message. Um, so just like the, the Jamison message is that we're, we're kind of, we're lighthearted, we're inclusive, and we're authentic. Uh, and as you mentioned there a while ago, we have the crack. Can confirm. Can confirm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can, that, 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 that certified yeah. third party here, that is correct. That is absolutely correct. 
Um, and yeah. And then a closing message is slanta. So people have learned two words of Irish today. So slanta means cheers and crack means fun. Slanta, you know what? I, I must confess, I've never known quite how to pronounce slanta. But... Slanta, yeah, exactly. You're bang right. on. All right, well, wonderful. Well, well, look, thank you very, very much for taking us through that. That's some fascinating stuff. And I think everybody who's watching has just learned at least something, at least one thing. I know I've learned quite a few. And yeah. it's a very, very interesting story, right? You know, right from the early days of fighting pirates all the way through to the World War II, uh, well, through all of the Civil War, the two World Wars, um, how they came together to, to, to collaborate and help each other through that time. And yeah. I, honestly, I'm still, I'm still baffled as to how all of the Jameson you can find around the world is coming out of this one distillery in, in Cork, which I think is just wonderful. And, I think, and, and, long, and as much as I hope you guys grow, double in size and all the rest of it, and I hope you have an, I hope you have an amazing amount of success in, in this part of the world and beyond. I still yeah. hope that that distillery never changes. Do you know what I mean? I, I hope yeah. that will always remain the case. Make it massive. Make it really big. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. I mean, the distillery is quite big, so hopefully, hopefully, yeah. we'll be able, able to meet the world's uh, demand. I hope so too. Although, no doubt, the demand will grow because I think what you have there is a phenomenal product. One I, genuinely is one of my favorite whiskeys to order. Um, on a on a on a uh, on a night out, I find it's just you, you just like I said, you know, you're drinking. Jameson, you know, and it's got yeah, like a really, exactly. it's got like, it's very, very smooth, but also it, it, it it's, it's a fierce in a very good way. If it's, a, you know, you're drinking it, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's excellent. So yeah. we've got 10 minutes left to go. We do have the trivia question to bring up, which, which we will touch upon as well. Shall we do that, Will, while you're making us a cocktail? Do you want to start demonstrating to us uh, as we wrap up? Sure. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Um, so the cocktail I'm going to make is a Jameson ginger and lime. A super easy cocktail. Um, so I'm going to start off with some ice. Just take a glass. There you go. Um, so I don't actually have very much ice left, but if you're making this at home, you f fill it up to the top with ice. Um, next. I'm going to so add one shot of Jameson, like I have here. Got a little bit more than a shot. Just about that. So next, so we call this a Jameson ginger ale and lime, JGL for short. Um, but you can, if you want, you can add um, something different. You can, I actually drink it with soda water a lot, uh, but you can drink it with apple juice, iced tea, and um, whatever you want, but the one we recommend to start with is uh, Jameson Ginger and Lime because it's light, it's refreshing, and it's sweet. Add some ginger ale. Um, and when you're adding the ginger ale, um, try and have the ginger ale chilled beforehand. It just makes the whole thing a bit more refreshing. Fill it up with ginger ale. And finally, take a wedge of lime, squeeze it, and drop it in. I'm going to add a little bit more ginger ale there. And there you have a super simple Jameson cocktail. Slanta. Slanta. Now, I unfortunately I have neither ginger ale nor lemon nor lime, but I do have an I, and I can't say who it is because unfortunately it's not Jameson, but it's whiskey, so it's close enough. We'll, we'll drink and see. Solidarity and spirit, I suppose. So, <laughs> Slanta, Will. Slanta, cheers. Thank you very much. Okay, so, so, to wrap things up, guys, like we said, we do have a little giveaway to you. So, Will, show us what you've got for the for the folks at home to win. What is what is it you're, so, you're offering? I have a snapback just like this. It's actually in black color, and I have two of them to give away. Um, but super cool. Your, and you can't buy these anywhere, can you? Like These aren't for sale. Nope. These aren't available for purchase anywhere. These are exclusive. Uh, like exclusive brand merchandise, like straight from yeah. the uh, straight from HQ. Okay, yeah, exactly. So, so okay, guys, we've got two hats to give away. We've got two questions to answer. The fastest, fastest response, the f correct response in the comments wins. Okay, so question number one. See your screens now. How many times is Jameson Irish whiskey distilled? So the fastest answer we see. 
I don't know. Ooh, someone's uh, no one yet. Ooh. Someone else. <laughs> How many times is Jameson Irish whiskey distilled? People are probably frantically looking at it. People are frantically looking at the answer online, maybe, if they haven't been paying attention. Oh, there we go. We have an answer. Um, oh, Jason Tan. Wow. Jason Tan. It Super is fan. very good, Jason. Well done. Super fan, Jason Tan. Beats us to it <laughs> once again. Great yeah, job, Jason. Yeah. So you have worn yourself a black Jamison snapback, just like this. Super cool. Um, and we'll send it out All after right. the MCO is lifted. Fantastic. Jason, yeah, thank you very much. So get in contact with us via the Facebook group page. Uh, leave us your details. And uh, like we'll said, when the MCO is lifted, we will find a way to get that to you. Okay, but there, guys, there is still one more hat to be won. So don't There's go anywhere. Don't go away. Get your, get your fingers ready. And let us know... Tell us the answer. What does Sine Metu mean? The Jameson motto, which speaks to uh, which speaks to everything the brand is about, everything the brand represents. What does Sine Metu, the motto, mean? What does it mean? I wonder who'll get it first now. There's a there's a cool Jameson snapback like this to be won. I wonder if I wonder if Jason knows the answer. <laughs> Oh, there we go. We have With an answer. answer. We have an answer. Now, unfortunately, I can't share their username because they haven't given us access to StreamYard, uh, which is our streaming platform. But nevertheless, I'm sure one of my colleagues will be able to tell me from where they are who it is. Is it Josephine? It might be Josephine. Anyway, we'll look and into that. Got the so answer right congratulations. Anyway. To we got the answer right anyway. Um, well then, so again, so message us via the uh, via the A Life Group Facebook page, and we will be in touch once the MRO. Oh, it's Bobby Tan. Oh, Bobby Tan. amazing! Congratulations, Great Bobby job, Tan. Bobby. Yeah. Great job, Bobby. You have won yourself a lovely looking Jameson Special Edition snapback yeah. in black, this color, but much cooler than this one. This one, I think, this one needs replacing. I was kind of hoping to win it myself, but. Bobby, well done. Congratulations. Uh, as Jameson Snapback will be on its way to you once the MRO is over. Congratulations. Thank you all for, for taking part and playing and paying attention. Well done. Great job, uh, guys. Yeah, we have Great questions as well. Great questions, too. Like, yeah, we, we've had a very good audience so far this week. Very engaged, very intelligent, keeping everybody on their toes, which is good to see. And yeah, it's, good it's, to it's see really people good to see. Really seem to be learning a lot. So at, least, at least we hope they are. That's kind of the point of these sessions and so which is why we're very grateful to to speakers like yourself will and you know for going into a lot of for going to a lot of effort i think to talk to us tonight um i i, I know it's uh I know, I know you didn't put that deck together specially for me but it felt that way you know <laughs> so <laughs> well that's we, great that's we, how we're supposed to feel <laughs> yeah, well we appreciate you sharing all that story with us so just we, we've got a couple of minutes before we unfortunately have to say good night but just to wrap things up, uh, share with us uh, what you think uh, your your plans will be once the MRO is. Uh, I keep looking outside wistfully, you know, not my balcony. Uh, once the once the MRO is over, you know, what, what is you mentioned? You guys are launching the the Black Barrel, is it? So, what will the plans be for that once uh, once the market open market opens again? Yeah, well, our plan, because Jamison Black Barrel works really well in cocktail bars, we're going to focus on cocktail bars. Um, so we're working on a, a list of now where they're going to be, where it's going to be launched. Um, and hopefully they'll be doing kind of promotions on Black Barrel to promote it further. Um, but that's kind of like the, what the plan is so far. We had planned to do like an official launch uh, of Black Barrel, but that was, um, that obviously couldn't go ahead. So we're up, so now we're going to, we're just going to focus on doing uh, promotions and cocktail bars um, to get them involved. Awesome, awesome. Well, we look forward to that. If there's anything yeah. like the um, the bicycle bars and the pong parties you were throwing, then we're sure there'll be something very, very special. So for all of you watching at home, uh, you can see it on the bottom. So do check out Jameson Malaysia on Instagram, at Jameson Malaysia, where they'll be keeping us all updated with the latest brands, brand goings on and happenings and parties and, and, and whatnot. So check them out for latest updates. I mean, I know we can't, we all can't wait to, to head back out. I keep looking at my balcony to, to head back outside when all this is over. And, uh, you know, well, I very much look forward to raising a glass with you, uh, myself very, very soon. Uh, Likewise, I can't wait to raise a glass while, in person. 
Slante in person and drink a real glass of Jameson. Um, so until then, my friend, please thank you very much again for, for joining us tonight. Take care, stay safe, stay indoors, most importantly, like I'm telling everyone here to do. Thank you again. Um, and maybe, hey, we'll do this again sometime because it's been an absolute Definitely. Fun. Thank you so much for having me. It was, it was great. And thank you to everyone who tuned in and asked questions and uh, took part. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we'll, we'll, we'll be having a couple more happy hour sessions this week. So do join in for those as well and, you know, and add your comments, tips and expertise. Weigh Great. in with your opinion. Get the Will conversation do. going. I'll give my <laughs> thank two cents. <laughs> Please do. Right. Good night. Thank you again. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 All right, guys. That was Will Moylan, brand ambassador for Jameson. He's been he's been in Malaysia for six months. Unfortunately, not the not the best time for a brand amp, for a new brand ambassador to be based in the country. But while well, well, while the events industry is suffering, but <clears throat> Will is doing as absolutely the best he can. And I'm, I for one, I'm very much looking forward to, <clears throat> excuse me, I will for one, I'm very much looking forward to when we can go outside again and get involved in some really cool sounding Jameson parties. Don't go away, at least not for long, because we do have one more session of the day coming up. It's a wrap up day three of ALAF Connects. At 9 p.m., we will be joined by Honey Madhu and Reem Shower. Reem will be hosting Honey's session. She will be uh, performing some live music for us. She'll be taking some requests, showing us some of her latest work. And it promises to be a wonderful way to wrap up the midweek session. We are now at the midweek point of A Life Connects, our very first virtual event brought to you by A Life Group. Tomorrow again promises to be a full day full of interesting, interesting and varied sessions from various speakers from various backgrounds. So it's going to be a very, very interesting, interesting day. I will be your host throughout the day. So please tune in if you've enjoyed this one. We will be sending out a survey uh, in the comments below the video. So please do fill that in. It would be great to get your feedback back on your thoughts because through those we can make our sessions bigger better and more relevant to what you guys are interested in we're nothing without the audience so please let us know what you want to see more of so please check out that survey and fill it in it only takes two minutes so i'm gonna go get myself some dinner and i will be back at 9 p.m to welcome honey madu and reem shower for our live music session tonight good night everybody thank you